uh, committee are required to sign a uh, confidentiality agreement and follow the rules, um, uh, the purchasing policies and guidelines. And that's all explained and well documented. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, in light of that, and, and given that I do a lot of this uh, in my day job, uh, I'd be happy to, uh, to self-nominate uh, for, uh, I'm, I'm very keen on seeing this role fulfilled within the board and, uh, and would be quite interested in participating in, uh, in the process. Thank you. And do we have a seconder for uh, Trustee Schwartz's nomination? I will second Trustee Schwartz. Thank you very much. And uh, I also had uh, Trustee Jenkins on my list. Uh, thank you to the chair. Um, I'd actually uh, thank you for the clarification for the responsibilities involved in this committee. And I'd like to self nominate myself. Thank you for that. And do we have a seconder for the nomination of Trustee Jenkins? Trustee Boothby, are you seconding that? Yes, Chair. Thank you very much. Are there any other nominations or self-nominations? Uh, I am not seeing any. So I think that means we need a motion to close nominations. Would somebody like to move that? And Trustee Lyra is moving that, seconded by? Trustee Campbell, all those in favor of a motion to close nominations, just put your hands up and opposed. And the motion to close nominations is carried. That means that we do have an election and let me just go back here. Uh, so we, we uh, will be asking the director, you're, if you're appointing um, the executive officer and the associate director as our uh, election assistants. Yes, that is correct, Chair. And so uh, to, to do your vote, would you please send a private chat to your designated election assistant? And I'll read the lists for um, the associate director Reynolds. It will be uh, trustees Scott, Blackburn, Campbell, Jenkins, Lyra, and Fisher. And that's using the private chat. And for executive officer Giroux, it will be Boothby, Huff, Ellis, Penny, Bell, and Schwartz. Any, everybody clear on that? Uh, Madam Chair, sorry, I uh, dropped my attention. Uh, who am I reporting to? You are sending your vote to Associate Director Reynolds. Thank you very much. And we can give everybody a moment to, to do this. And of course, there will need to be a small amount of time for counting the votes.
And I'm assuming that the result will be private chatted to uh, the director or myself when everything has been counted. And I am pleased to announce that Trustee Schwartz has been elected as the additional member of the Integrity Commissioner Selection Committee. Congratulations, Trustee Schwartz, and thank you, Trustee Jenkins, for putting your name forward as well. Thank you very much. And so I think the recommendation then that Trustee Schwartz be appointed as a member of the Integrity Commi Commissioner Selection Committee. Someone could please move that on the floor. I'll move that. Thank you, Trustee Penny. Seconded by Trustee Ellis. And I will call the question. All those in favor? Trustee Boothby. And are, is this a recorded vote? I don't think we well, need a record. With an election. Sorry? I believe she is uh, a member of the committee as a result of an election. Yeah, so we don't need a recorded vote, but we but we might as well just vote on on confirming confirming the appointment, and uh, we seem to have a majority in favor, and that's all we need. And opposed, if anybody is opposed, and if nobody is voting opposed, then we the the motion is carried and the appointment is made. So moving on then, that brings us to our next item uh, on the agenda as a matter for discussion, actually for questions. And that is uh, to have the uh, question period that we did not have last night uh, with regard to the Valuing Voices Identity Matters uh, report. Um, we had a really good presentation on that from staff uh, last night. And so I would like to go to the director in case there is any further uh, information um, to be provided on that. And I would note also that at the end of report 20-059, uh, uh, with regard to the student survey, uh, the uh, key questions uh, that have been provided for, for discussion purposes. So, Madam Director. Thank you, and to you, Madam Chair. Um, as you've summarized, uh, the discussion or the presentation uh, took place yesterday um, with a very robust presentation of um, the summary of the process as well as the outcome. Uh, and so, uh, Executive Officer Drew is here and uh, we would be delighted to um, assist trustees with any uh, question 
um, for their discussion of that item. So I will turn it, I uh, don't know, Chair, if you'd like me to turn it back to you to open the floor to questions, um, but we do have uh, Executive Officer Jeru who led the project uh, here with us. Uh, and I believe Superintendent uh, Baker is also with us uh, who is leading uh, the subsequent work uh, as a follow-up. Thank you very much for that. Uh, I remind trustees that we do still have uh, our COVID-19 update uh, as, as a matter for discussion. And I don't know how many other matters there will be that we have, have discussion. And I also am aware that at least one of us must leave uh, around seven o'clock. So please keep your questions to questions. Uh, we will have plenty of time for debates and speeches uh, down the road because these, these to this topic is going to come back to us many times. So beginning with Trustee Jenkins. My apologies, I left my hand up there. <laughs> and, uh, and I won't count that as that was, you just used all your speaking time. Trustee Campbell. Oh, uh, thank you. Um, so uh, I guess I'm focused on the fourth question, uh, what actions, next steps uh, uh, should be considered. And uh, staff already uh, uh, talked to us about uh, how we might start to um, uh, correlate with other measures, uh, suspensions, et cetera. In the fullness of time, there's a lot of work involved, and I, I thoroughly uh, recognize that. Uh, however, um, I have some questions um, leading up to this. Um, uh, and that is, uh, first of all, in the report, the stats can comparative numbers that we're looking at. Are those uh, all Ottawa households or only those Ottawa households with uh, uh, school-aged children uh, who, you know, uh, aged from 2016 might be expected to be in the high school and, and, and that kind of thing? Um, just because I would expect potentially uh, uh, some real differences if it was all uh, households. That's my first question. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. So I believe that Manager Orczewski has uh, just joined us. She may just still be getting um, set up and I'm going to give that question to her. I believe it's all Ottawa households, but she'll clarify. And also to let you know, Manager Orczewski is with us and Superintendent Baker is with us. Research Officer Saida Tass um, had a prior commitment for this evening. And so there may be some questions that we will get back to in writing, but uh, over to Manager Orczewski for this one. Uh, thank you, and I'm sorry I came in uh, mid-question, so could I ask the uh, chair or the uh, uh, trustee to repeat the question, please? Uh, sure, shorter this time <laughs> uh, with practice. Um, the uh, comparative stats can numbers that uh, are in the report against many of the questions anyway, uh, are they all households? Or are they those households from the uh, Stascan Householder Survey that are from 2016 that are with school-aged kids uh, you know, aged forward from 2016, I'm thinking especially for the high school uh, uh, students uh, uh, survey. So, um, no, it was directly from the Statistics Canada total household. So they may or may not have had um, children in the household. It did not provide that level of disaggregation on the website. Okay, yeah, because I'm, I'm sure that information can be uh, 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 obtained and we might have more accurate comparators to the extent that that comparator is useful to us. I'm not, I'm not sure uh, how useful it is or is, is not, but perhaps sure. to consider, again, this goes to question for actions, next steps. Um, oh, oh, sorry, if I um, may interrupt again, sorry through you, Madam Chair, that was one of the um, uh, plans that staff had for uh, when we start linking the data. Of course, as you're aware, we do have um, a socioeconomic status indicator that we use in our annual student achievement report, which is based on custom tabulation data uh, that we get from, Stati from Statistics Canada that is um, only households with school-aged children and on a much finer uh, level of detail. So part of the analysis that we're wanting to do moving forward is to actually look at uh, the comparison between the census information and how closely that um, reflects our SES and our RAISE indicators. Fantastic. Um, uh, a related question, I'm trying to move on here quickly and I'll probably have to put back on the list, uh, Madam Chair. 
um, is uh, do we have access to, or actually I should ask, was the OCSB part of this study, were all, all local boards involved or only us locally? And if other boards locally were involved, uh, do we have or can we obtain access to their results? So um, we, uh, the, the, our co-terminus board did not um, undertake this collection at this point. Uh, by 2023, it will uh, be a requirement um, for all boards to uh, have either undertaken or um, be planning to undertake uh, this sort of collection. And part of the data standards do require that an open data file um, be released. And so, um, we would be able to access that information and we, we do have access to information for the boards in the Toronto area that have uh, undertaken this, this study. Great, thank you. Madam Chair, do I have more than a minute left? Uh, I think you, you have a, a slightly generous minute left and uh, you might even have two minutes left, uh, but we are in board. So this oh. is your one-, one uh, Oh, thank you for the reminder. Practice. Thank you for the reminder. Okay, uh, uh, with respect to the uh, the uh, original presentation, the um, again, I'm sort of focused on the high school because uh, the response rate, even though you know we tried our best and, and uh, it's respectable in terms of regular survey results, but uh, I don't know what we do with the uh, one third response rate from the elementary schools. I mean, it's uh, maybe uh, useful for rich discussions, but uh, I am focused more on the high school uh, numbers because it is a, a, a meteor response rate. Um, uh, though I do notice in the, um, in the, in the staff report, they're saying that some, some secondary sites we had as low as 4% response rate, particularly alternate sites, uh, maybe others. My guess is, uh, probably we, we will find we have lower response rate amongst, uh, uh, applied versus academic. And, you know, there are certain predictions I can make around, uh, uh certain, uh, demographics. And, and so I guess I am concerned about the missing and who we did not manage to capture. Um, I would imagine alternate high schools, uh, uh, these are exactly some of the kids, right, that we want to see in uh, our survey results. So I guess what I'm wondering is what are we going to be able to do, if anything, to, and the, 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 the manager is getting to this, to, to impute missing data, uh, to figure out who's missing. Uh, who we really wanted to hear from, because I don't know in terms of these split out categories whether we heard from 100% of some kinds of students and 10% and of other kinds of students. And if we're going to start to correlate with suspension rates and this kind of thing, you know, what does it really mean if we don't have a fix on who didn't reply? So I guess I'll leave it at that and listen to the reply. Thank you. So I'll start and then Manager Orcheski can continue. There absolutely um, is work to be done in terms of thinking about the response rates. And um, I think that um, in this year and for this administration, we can be pleased with the response rate as the starting point for what will be an ongoing collection process. But there's definitely room for growth. The next stage for us is looking at the school level results. And that will give us a better understanding of um, what some of those variations are. And um, it also will help to inform what kinds of strategies might be useful in the next time we do collection. But in the time in between, there's a space for conversation in those school communities where the response rates were low. Not everything is about the data collection. Sometimes that shines a light on the need to have some conversations um, in those school communities about what's the lived experience, about why participation uh, can be helpful, et cetera. So that's part of what we'll look at. Manager Orcheski may want to add to that. Um, yeah, I'll add very briefly, certainly part of our um, path forward when we start linking the data to uh, student outcomes, we'll be looking at um, where we can, um, whether we have an imbalance of response rates for certain types of programs. Uh, with respect to imputing uh, missing data, um, you've probably gleaned from the um, report that's in front of you that there is a lot of intersectionality, not only within each of the um, dimensions of identity, but also across. And so it would not be an appropriate um, uh, approach um, to be trying to impute 
that kind of information across the demographics, but we will be certainly cross-referencing it with um, data within our student information system and uh, trying to, again, like um, Executive Officer Giroux uh, mentioned, having conversations with schools to try and um, see how we might be able to um, provide additional context to uh, the reports that are coming forward. Thank you. I'll move next then to Trustee Lyra. Uh, my first question is I'd like to make a motion to the committee. S sorry, we couldn't hear that. I'd like to make a motion to the committee. A motion to uh, Oh, a motion to, 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 re, uh, to adopt rules of committee. Is there a seconder for that motion? I'll second the motion. Trustee Ellis will second that. Uh, so it's it's a board decision. Um, uh, I will call the question then. Uh, so so you probably want. I do have the speakers list written down. So so you won't be lost if you take your hand down and put it up again as to whether or not you want to adopt rules of committee. Uh, so. Please, all those in favor of adopting rules for committee, and I'm going to try to count people here. And those opposed, please. And the motion to adopt rules of committee is carried. Trustee Lyra. All right, um, so my first question is, why was the decision to break household income into more blocks than the census state? Sorry, Ms. Drew. Can I just repeat what I think I heard the question to be? Because I was having difficulty uh, hearing. Was your question um, in relation to the um, income level and why we collapsed the external source in the higher levels? If that was your question, um, it was because the uh, ranges of income that we had in our survey didn't directly map onto the um, Statistics Canada ranges in those upper regions. They had um, a different, uh, we had $20,000 ranges within our groupings across all of them. And Statistics Canada in their survey um, or census, uh, had $25,000 ranges. So it wasn't directly mappable. So that's why we had to provide that um, uh, combined value. The question was, why did we not use the StatsCan range? Yeah, why did we break it into several more blocks than the census? Um, I think uh, part of the reason was we had also been looking at um, questions that had been undertaken by other uh, school districts and had opted to uh, keep the ranges that, uh, that uh, I think it was Toronto District had used those ranges. Trustee Lara? Um, I have a question. On page 39, we get a shift from 6% in elementary to 23% in bad mood, and a shift of 8% for nervous or anxious, 26%. And I'm wondering what accounts for that jump between elementary and secondary, and what we can do with the district to address it. Sorry, I'm just trying to scroll through to um, page 39 of the report on my iPad here to see exactly what you are referring to. And if I can make a suggestion for some of the questions that will re require a great deal of uh, examination of detail in the report, it may be better to provide those in writing and have a memorandum that can be made public come back with the answers after rather than taking time scrolling through the report here tonight. Uh, okay, so I'm sorry, uh, Trustee Lyra, can you repeat your question, please? I'm, it's on the well-being table, is that I, correct? I put, it, I put it in the chat. I realize my internet's not going to be good enough to speak out all of these. 
And it's a multi-part question, well-being question on page 39, shift from 6% in, in a bad mood to 23%. What are we doing to cause these changes, nervous or anxious, from 8 to 26%? 20% uh, of our high school students don't want to go to school almost all of the time and a further almost 20% it's often. 75% of our middle and high school students are tired most or all of the time. And then a further question on page 60, 35% of people don't feel they have a chance to learn about their cultural background and identity. Uh, page 51, the question on stereotyped based on their disability should have an I don't have a disability option. And finally, uh, on page 55, safe on a school bus takes a huge drop. Explain. Uh, my suspicion is that it would be much easier to, to, to provide written reports to these. That would be my preference if that would be um, acceptable to uh, the trustees. Just to clarify, I think some of these questions aren't about the drop in response rates, but they're the feelings of students, if I understand the question correctly. And we definitely can provide a written response, but I'm not certain we'll be able to explain what the cause of the change in response rates um, is at this point that'll be part of our future work. So um, what we've got today is the data and what we've got ahead is the work to understand the data. And, and in some cases, that's gonna be more detailed analysis. And in some cases, that's going to be discussions either at the system level or at the school level um, with groups of students. But we are happy to take the questions and provide a more fulsome written response. Um, I was hoping that we, as a, as a discussion item, try and discuss um, things that we can do to address these issues. Uh, I would love to see um, a genuine meaningful discussion about moving the starting date for our high school later because there's loads of evidence to say that teenagers' brains are wired differently than adults' brains. And starting high school at 10.30 or 11 means that they are going to be less tired. Trustee Lyra, I'm going to interrupt you. Uh, he, here because that uh, the the discussion tonight is questions with re regard to the report there will be a future opportunity to try to think about what we're going to do with the report right now the focus is on the information we have in front of us and not on other potential initiatives that we might take Did you have any further questions on the report itself? Yes, not. Thank you, Trustee Lara. I'll move on then to Trustee Ellis. Um, uh, thank you. Uh, I'd, I'd sort of like to understand, it was mentioned um, in the report that um, there's going to be dashboards at the school level so that um, the school community um, and can use that information. Um, I'd like, a, if I could, a clarification on um, sort of the type of information that will be on it. And if there will be restrictions, you know, will the principal see a larger data set than teachers, if teachers see it? Um, and of interest as a trustee is to um, the trustees access to that information to help them understand their their schools. So I'll start and um, say that at this point, we are not um, entirely certain what elements will be in the um, school level reports. We've had lots of discussion about what some of those uh, elements might be. And we're mindful that although we have zero suppression in the district level report, at the school level that won't look the same. Uh, depending on response rates, uh, having zero suppression could um, risk identifying some students. Um, and so we need to work with the data a little bit more to better understand that. Um, we definitely believe that um, there will be a difference in what data can be public facing uh, and what data would be available for use, for example, um, by the school staff in the school learning plan. 
And uh, we are very clear in our commitment to the community about um, school staff does not have access to any of the data. Uh, it's confidential and anonymized. Uh, so they would never see individual data relating to a student. And um, the last piece, I think, in terms of what does it look like, it probably looks like um, something that we can generate so that it's kind of, um, I don't know if I want to use uh, profile as opposed to portrait, school portrait uh, data on the school website. And I don't know if the manager has anything more to um, add to that. And I see her shaking her head no. So, so there may be different levels of access to the data depending on who's, you know, uh, and what level of, of <laughs> privilege they have? Is so access to um, data uh, is really rooted in the business need to know. So if we go back to my point about suppression of data and the idea that we may have a very small number of students who identify um, in some way, it may be obvious within a school community, um, depending on what that data category is. And so, um, you know, we want to think very carefully about that, but um, there may be some cases where uh, it's important for the uh, school principal to understand that, but it's not important that we're reporting on that um, and we don't generally report on numbers below 10. Thank you. I, my, my sense is that you're still working through some of the details on this. Um, I look forward to hearing about that. I just want to say that, um, you know, please keep in mind the trustee and what, how this at their school level might be beneficial to them um, as, you think, as you think this through. Thank you. That's my questions. Thank you very much, Trustee Ellis. Uh, Trustee Bell. First, thank you, Chair, and thank you, trustees and staff, for coming back tonight to discuss this. I really, um, it's really appreciated. One of the top questions uh, on the memo is what stands out to you? The percentage of racism, worried about bullying, and don't feel safe. So, considering these, um, this data that we've gathered from percep the perceptual uh, survey questions, I have a couple of hopefully distinct questions. Um, I'll try to separate them out as best as possible. Um, we know, we heard yesterday the importance of, uh, of actively listening and meaningful communication. So how will we go back to the student population and relay the findings of, of the survey and to ensure that a continual dialogue on this isn't just one off is my first question. My second uh, question is whether or not similar uh, surveys, particularly with the perceptual data that we've gathered, um, whether or not uh, there have been any in the province that have been undertaken and where we fare with regards to that. So um, specifically, again, racism, worried about bullying and don't feel safe on those three issues. Uh, the Last question related to Chris's question is how will the staff use this data, especially with our quest for um, ensuring an equity lens to all of our memos that we put forth. So I'm thinking about the staffing memo that we discussed yesterday. I'm thinking about potential accommodation reviews that will come up. Uh, and I think those are those are my hopefully not too tough questions for tonight. So one thing um, uh, that you should be aware of is we have as a district collected school climate data for several years. Um, and that uh, school climate data um, has similar perceptual questions, although not, not the exact same. So they're not directly comparable. Um, but what it means is we have some experience in uh, both uh, sharing the data and using the data to inform uh, practice. What's uh, really important for us to remember as we go forward is how we use the data to inform district-wide strategies, policies, and deal with broad level issues, and how we use the data to support school administrators 
in their work and building a sense of um, community and a, a culture of caring and social responsibility in their school. Because really what we're trying to move is student achievement uh, and student outcomes and student well-being, right? And so we don't all need or use the data in the same way. Uh, Manager Orocheski and the research team have um, a data support model that uh, they've been working on with school superintendents for the last, uh, we were in our fourth year now. And uh, with um, our colleagues in program and learning and uh, um, adolescent learning and innovation, we do quite a bit of planning about what key pieces of data do we have and what reports could we generate and what would be the guiding questions for principals to be working with their school staff or with their student population to try and um, better understand the issues and uh, help to uh, um, affect some change. So lots of layers there. Um, our data won't be directly comparable to other school districts, but we um, certainly looked at a lot of school districts um, surveys and uh, were informed a little bit by that and we'll continue to monitor and assess against those. And I'm sure there's lots more that Manager Orcheski or Superintendent Baker could add uh, about our practice. So I think, uh, Michelle, you've touched on a number of things that um, I would have uh, mentioned as well. Um, uh, and in terms of, um, again, how we will use this information, I think the data support model is um, a really key um, uh, model or method to be um, working with schools. I know we've done similar things with um, when we've done the biannual school climate surveys and the uh, feedback that uh, schools receive with those and um, support uh, principals and having focus groups or follow up meetings with their students. So I see very similar types of uh, things happening here. Trustee Bell, did that get all of your questions? I guess um, just to clarify uh, the the second question, when we how are we going to? Is there a plan in place, or is do we are we thinking about how we're going to go back to the student population and have that meaningful communication on these results? So we shared um, the uh, link to the results uh, last week and we've been working on the infographics because that's a little bit um, easier and it will be of interest to some groups of students. It uh, won't uh, necessarily be as interest to all groups, but students uh, biggest interest, um, except for some district wide student organizations like the Senate or the President's Council are more interested in the school community. And so part of that working with the uh, principal teams is about how do they have conversations with students in the school? How does the work of um, the equity team support that? Uh, what can we learn from the school level data and how can we go back and have conversations to try and build and address those uh, issues? Well, if I, if I may jump in, Trustee Bell, uh, through you, Madam Chair, uh, many principals are already having these conversations. And so there have been several town halls that have been happening virtually with parents, students, and community. And I think we'll see many more to come. And so th that work is already starting in and around these subjects that are, that are uh, prescient and timely at this time. Trustee Bell, anything further? Just my gratitude. Thanks, guys. Thank you very much. And moving on then, I have uh, Trustee Campbell for a second time. I have no other first time speakers. Trustee Campbell. Whoops, there we go. Thank you. Actually, I believe first time for committee. <laughs> um, the, uh, in any event, um, I get to squeeze in a uh, question, thankfully, and that's uh, really uh, um, uh, following on from where I was going uh, uh, previously. Um, I, I thoroughly um, understand and respect the, the executive officer's uh, point that even if we're missing uh, uh, data, our results can absolutely be the foundation for a lot of rich discussions 
right to it to occur and, and, and that kind of thing and people can question and explore and this is all very good um uh i'm certain that that will occur um i guess ideally from my perspective though we'd actually be able to see these numbers of having real statistical value right in terms of uh, uh setting goals and targets for the board in terms of lowering this or increasing that. Um, ideally, I'd like to be able to be able to, to trust uh, a stat which said, um, let's say, uh, uh, black racialized students uh, are twice as likely to be suspended as as uh, non racialized students, let's say, uh, who knows. Uh, okay, but if I can't trust the numbers, because there's a lot of missing data, then can we even say that? Uh, right. All we can do is say amongst survey respondents, but if we're missing a lot of survey respondents who may have been suspended, <laughs> right, then, then what can we really say? And this is, I guess, what uh, concerns me. So I get the rich discussions bit, but uh, I really am concerned that uh, we do our very best to validate the data, perhaps do what we've done in the past. Uh, Manager Ordeski has uh, worked wonders. Uh, uh, in the past in terms of uh, matching uh, student numbers to uh, postal codes and census tracts. Uh, and so that might be one great way to determine, uh, not just on a school's basis or a catchment space basis, uh, but in a more fine grain basis where we're missing uh, uh, kids. Uh, some schools uh, may draw from very across very diverse neighborhoods, uh, some tonier than others, uh, where respondents predominantly in the from Tony or neighborhoods, right? And I mean, we can get real data skewing depending upon the responses. And uh, so I, I'll leave it at that, I guess, going forward, um, I really do hope that we can validate and extend this data as much as possible. If we can't extend it, then I really hope that any forthcoming reports have all kinds of caution flags around interpretation because uh, uh, I won't know otherwise uh, what to make of it. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Trustee Campbell. Uh, I don't know if there's any staff comment in response to that, but I suspect all of us share your concerns that we do actually have, have uh, useful and valid uh, information going forward on which to base our decision. I know that our staff have a considerable amount of expertise in trying to make that happen. So. Uh, we don't, I don't have anyone else on my speakers list at the moment. Uh, we are still in rules of committee and to return to board rules, we would need a motion. Is it, Trustee Ellis? Yes, I'd like to uh, move a motion to return to uh, board. And we don't need any uh, seconder for that because we're in rules of committee. All those in favor of returning to board? and opposed and i'm seeing that 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 uh, motion is carried so we are now back in rules of board and uh is there any discussion in board on this or can we move on to the next item uh, I would like also to say thank you again to staff for coming back tonight and providing us answers. And could you please remind us uh, when we have questions where we should send them? I will make the request that anybody submitting questions on this to staff, please copy all trustees so that we don't all end up asking the same question 17, 17 times. We'll send an email to you, but it's to the Valuing Voices email. Excellent. Thank at OCDSB.ca. Excellent. Thank you very much for that. Moving on then on our agenda, our next item is our COVID-19 update and I turn to the director. Thank you, and to you, Madam Chair. Um, so the uh, most significant uh, piece of information regarding uh, the COVID uh, situation and the COVID update, as we are um, essentially wrapping up the school year this week, um, we are uh, wrap, uh, ramping up our um, work uh, to prepare for a new school year. Um, trustees would be aware that uh, last week, uh, Friday, uh, we received um, the perspectives and guidelines from the Ministry of Education pertaining to uh, returning to school. 
that said, um, most boards, most districts, uh, including ours, uh, staff had already been engaged in um, speculating on uh, certain uh, 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 scenarios for return um, with consideration to much of the materials that have come out. Um, and you will know, uh, trustees will be very aware that one of the most recent research pieces was from uh, Sick, Kid, Kid, Sick Kids Hospital that came out, uh, I believe, the day before the ministry's um, guidelines came out. The guidelines uh, outlined by the ministry um, speak to uh, three patterns for return. Uh, one pattern being uh, the conventional pattern for instruction, which would see all students returning with some um, guidelines and parameters uh, set uh, to uh, maintain uh, some uh, care uh, around the concern of spread of COVID. Um, the second model, Model B, is an adaptive model. Um, sometimes people are calling it hybrid, uh, but there are many uh, caveats uh, suggested in those guidelines. Uh, and then the third is where we are now leaving off the school year, which is in a full virtual mode. Um, and that would be uh, in the event that uh, it was deemed unsafe for students to return. Uh, the intimation from the, uh, the ministry um, and certainly the conversation that is most actively being undertaken by uh, districts is around the adaptive model uh, because that is the most significant departure uh, from what we've had in the past, conventional, and what we currently have, virtual. Uh, so it is the model um, that is a complete um, new model to us. And our district has been working uh, on what that would look like. Some of the caveats and the principles that are guiding um, the decisions around the model for an adaptive um, approach to uh, return to school uh, include uh, cohorts of no more than 15 students together at a time. Um, maintaining cohorts um, on their own uh, for the purpose of contract, uh, contact tracing should it be required. Uh, maintenance of physical distancing, um, a limited contact with different staff. So ensuring that the cohorts actually include the staff person um, outside of course of the 15 students. Um, that um, there is a collaboration with uh, public health uh, and so this is where there could be differentiations from one municipality or one area to another uh, because the uh, public health, um, they are following data pertaining to that jurisdiction. So that will inform some of the ways that they advise as well, um, as well as coordination with the, the coterminous board. Um, from a practical point of view uh, with the OCDSB, uh, that's pretty well necessary because we share our transportation plans. Uh, and so um, uh, the, the coordination um, with the OCSB um, has certainly been something that we have undertaken. Um, but regardless of the fact that we do not have a similar arrangement with our uh, French Catholic and French Public Board, we have established a collaboration and a cooperation with um, our French Catholic and French public as well, given that we are all serving the Ottawa community. And so um, that has been undertaken. So those are some key principles that are have been outlined through um, what the, um, the minister has, or the ministry has uh, shared with us. It's a very robust document. So um, I'm drawing out some of the key principles that are guiding our modeling. But I'd also like to um, just point out some of the, um, points of interest that trustees will need to bear in mind as well um, as we continue down this road. Um, so I've already alluded to transportation um, because once it is uh, an academic model for instructional delivery is arrived at by the school board, um, the, the models around transportation to serve that structure um, will then um, need to come into play. Um, indeed, OSTA has already started modeling and um, reflecting on possibilities as well, as that is a very, very complex undertaking. Um, and so uh, the uh, executive director or, um, uh, uh, has undertaken much of that work already. And so we do have um, a meeting tomorrow and upcoming meetings 
um, to uh, make some decisions and to share information, uh, but that's a key collaboration that needs to happen. Um, the other key piece uh, that uh, our staff has discussed and we share uh, this priority, we believe with our OCSB partner um, is uh, equity principles. So while it is that we are committed to um, uh, cohorts um, and um, that we'll see probably um, very likely um, not every student at school every day. Um, what we also do recognize is that we do have some schools um, where we do need to um, uh, try to uh, um, extend uh, the opportunity for more of more students to be in attendance at school more frequently because of the need of that community and the need of that school. Um, so we recognize that equity means that it's not going to necessarily be the same everywhere and that there are some anomalies that will emerge um, as we think about our plans pertaining to schools and school communities where a need um, is, is um, registered. Uh, we also recognize as well that we will, um, when we consider our most vulnerable students, um, we think about uh, how it is that we are serving and supporting our students who have special education needs that require our attention um, and differentiation. Um, and so again, um, when we think about how it is that our models come out, there are very likely to be um, parallel models or adjusted models to support students who have uh, extraordinary needs um, outside of those models. Um, and so I just wanted to flag those pieces because as we are, we are working on the plans, we want the trustees to be aware that we are also registering those considerations. Uh, and it is highly unlikely that the OCDSB is going to be uh, producing a one size fits all uh, secondary and a one size fits all elementary, um, because certainly um, that is not the nature of um, the OCDSB school community. Um, and sometimes it's challenging to um, explain and help people to engage with anomalies and difference um, when it comes to um, uh, deciding on, on a structure. So I, I think um, that's where we are um, in terms of what I can update. We certainly haven't landed uh, up to this afternoon. I do know that um, our leads at the um, tables external to uh, OCDSB are um, our associate director and um, as well as uh, Superintendent Nadia Tawage. And indeed she is uh, busily writing and working uh, this evening because uh, there were meetings up to this afternoon with uh, OCSB uh, teams as well as um, uh, Ottawa uh, Public Health. Um, the, um, the directors of education also had a discussion this evening and we anticipate that there will be further discussion on Thursday morning with the deputy minister um, as we recognize that um, many questions are emerging. The one thing that is really um, important as well for me to share, which I think is um, really reflective of uh, the amazing leadership of, um, of Superintendent Tawage uh, as well as Associate uh, Director Reynolds, is uh, the collaborative tables that have been established. Um, and um, we know that um, uh, Superintendent McCoy has been working with uh, the uh, labor folks and our, our unions um, for all of this time with the continuity of learning. Uh, but the table that um, Superintendent Toage has established for the return to um, school piece includes not only our union partners, but also our mental health lead, our equity lead, as well as our, um, our manager of BMLT uh, and, um, and, and LSS. And it's important for me to say that to you because um, that means that the, the, all, this table has in fact been a part of the design right from the beginning. So this is not something where we're gonna come up with a design at DEC or something and just share it for feedback that we have had input from equity and LSS and um, and uh, mental health and our union partners right at the inception of the thinking of how we're going to return. So when we got that information on, fr on Friday, it was basically just catapulted the thinking into some practicalities. Um, and uh, and uh, again, um, we, we do recognize that we'll be going back 
Um, and the one thing we are going to be doing um, coming up uh, tomorrow or early Thursday will be to launch a thought exchange that goes out to our community uh, so that we can hear from families um, on their perspectives. But we wanted to didn't to give we didn't want to give some general question. We wanted to be able to share with them some of the thinking around what the models might look like um, so that they actually have something to comment upon. Um, and so that's where we are right now um, with an anticipation of being able to draw the models together um, probably uh, at the end of the first week of July. Thank you very much, Director. Uh, I have several uh, hands up and I'll begin with uh, Trustee Ellis. Um, thank you. And I was um, happy to hear the director speak to um, equity and recognizing that there are groups of students. Um, I'm not surprised, <laughs> um, but I did want to emphasize that there are, um, as, as everyone here knows, there are students um, who uh, find disruptions to their schedule to be um, an impediment to their learning, as well as I'm thinking some, you know, children on the ASD spectrum, um, LLD, um, that and and that we will be giving a focus to getting them back and into a um, routine that helps them learn. Um, and I know many families are. Um, this has been a, a struggle for them to um, deal with uh, to support their children, not deal with to support their children in, in this time without the resources that uh, they had previously had um, at, for, at the school level. So um, I, I won't be contemplating a motion at this time because I think district staff is is um, taking this um, to heart and we'll be looking out for those students um, in an equitable um, way. So thank you. Thank you, Trustee Ellis. Uh, next, I have Trustee Penny. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. And I'm just, um, and then thank you very much, Director, for that briefing. That was extremely thorough. And I can see that you are taking this seriously and throwing as many resources at it uh, as possible to ensure that the plan is fulsome and that it is well-developed, well thought out, and that you're involving all of our stakeholders and partners. I really appreciate that. The one question I do have though is I can see that um, something like this, which is basically unprecedented, unprecedented uh, the event, um, how are you uh, taking care of the well-being of your management staff? Because I can see that there are tremendous pressures on, um, on, on superintendents, principals, vice principals, and even uh, teachers and trying to make sure that everything is taken care of as much as possible. And, and I can see that a lot of the stuff's going to taken care of over the summer. And I am concerned that it's uh, going to provide a huge amount of stress on leadership. And I'm just wondering um, if, you, if you also see that and if, um, if you have any, uh, any, any plans, if you, if you um, have any mitigation on that. That's, uh, Trustee Penny, um, that certainly is, a, is a, an important question. And it's one that we have been talking about um, as, uh, as the, the uh, Director Executive Council table, um, because of course we have to balance um, what we know um, it has been, uh, you know, the word unprecedented is uh, overused this, these days, but I, I can't think of another word, um, you know, a time that people just have not experienced before. And I will say to you, and I, I'm very happy to say this publicly, that um, the OCDSB staff has risen to the occasion in ways that are, are outside of our imagination. They're things that we expected and many people have gone above and beyond the expectation. Um, and so, but that takes work, that takes focus, that takes concentration um, while it is that they're managing their own things um, and their own um, realities at home and continue to do so. And uh, the summer is not um, yielding a lot of um, uh, opportunities for a break from the point of view of commitments to families because our our camps and you the usual kinds of vacation things are also not uh, as readily available this summer uh, so we do recognize that um, there is a, 
um, a mental health piece um, that is and a well-being piece that's very much attached to this. So I can't say to you that we have um, a clear answer for you. Um, um, and I'll say to you that it is a, it is a reality uh, right from the, um, the deck table uh, into um, our, all of our teams that are on the ground and um, in classrooms. So our cognizance of it is um, for our first move, um, how it is that we can work to help um, is our second move. And I think that a part of it is around uh, balancing expectations. Um, and so we certainly are trying to look at what are the most key and important things that need to happen, what has to happen now and what can happen later. Um, but it's also mitigating expectations about um, the Russian scurry uh, because we can't guarantee that everything is going to be ready um, for the, um, the very first of September. Um, and so we recognize that um, there is probably not, we haven't you know, outlined anything yet, but there's probably going to be some kind of scaling um, of the entrance to make sure that we're able to get things in place. Um, but we're not also going to foolishly try to wait till everything's in place and then get everybody in. When things are ready, people will come in and we'll try to keep moving that ball. Um, so this is a human effort uh, with a lot of unknowns. Um, we suspect that um, as with the closure period, um, there are going to be scaled um, memos and scaled um, information because as questions become asked, we will get um, new directives and new answers. Um, and that may shift some of the uh, work over time because again, we're writing this as it, there's no script for this. So um, that said, um, what we are trying to do is keep people calm, um, to keep people reassured, uh, to ensure that everyone knows that we under we do understand what's happening. We don't always have the answers. Um, and I will say to you that that approach has been helpful with many of our staff in that myself and others of the team have received messages from staff of appreciation for the fact that while it is we don't always have the answers that we are trying to support and they recognize it. So that's the best I can offer at this particular time, um, but we are certainly working to um, maintain uh, some calm. Uh, we do intend to uphold our closure period um, as we typically do in the middle of the summer. So the last week of July and the first week of August. Um, and we're working really hard to get people to put their devices down. Um, and I, I've, I've told my staff, I'm very proud of myself that I've learned how to um, send timed messages so they don't get things on the weekend. Um, but we're, we're, we know that we have to be directive almost in helping people to, um, to uh, disconnect and we're going to, to do the best we can to, to balance the responsibilities with, um, with uh, a sense of need for well-being. And thank you so much for saying that. I really appreciate those, those words. And I think I can speak for the rest of the trustees in saying that you know, we're here, we're all in this together. And if, if yes. there's anything the trustees can do to help, we are certainly up for it. And we, you know, we're here to, to support you in any way we can. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Penny. Uh, Trustee Bill. Well, I didn't want to follow that to tell you the truth. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Uh, I think you, you partially answered the question, Director. Um, and it has to do with communication. So over the past uh, couple of weeks, I've had a number of parents reach out to me and say, does the 10 person bubble equal the number of kids that are in the daycare and trying to, to navigate that. And so I imagine that come September 1st, especially if we're gonna have lots of different models that there's gonna be so many questions and our communication and our efforts around that will probably be very ramped. So I will, not ask a question then I will just extend my gratitude as well to all all the staff especially the communications folks yeah and and I think uh, trustee Bell you've touched on a very important point um, in our meeting this morning uh, we identified the need for um, uh, at least signaling what um, our staff and our community can expect for communication. So because we recognize that we're not going to be in our regular cycle um, as of the end of this week. So um, the usual communications from teachers and so forth will not be a part of our regular cycle. 
So we do recognize that we need to give a signal as to how we can expect to communicate because we need to be accurate and timely. So some of the information that people would like to have on Friday of this week is not going to be available um, because we just won't know. Uh, you touched on another good point, which is a question about childcare. And we do know that the directive, the directives and the direction around that are emerging. Um, we do not have clarity on that uh, because we have to figure out how the two pieces in terms of how a school model and a childcare model are going to meld together. So there are a lot of unknowns there, but we re realize that even communicating that we don't know yet, but we know it's a question we have to answer, that is helpful to people to hear. And so working on um, a communication structure for this time going into a full answer, we know that the, uh, com the uh, conclusion and the clarity on which uh, model will be uh, expected for the, the return to school will likely not come until August from the ministry because that will be driven by data around the spread and the containment of the spread. Um, and so optimistically, um, the ministry has talked about the potential for returning to a conventional model even as early as, early as the end of September, but that is all we all going to be dependent on the data. So the data is going to emerge and the timelines could change and it's important that um, everyone recognize that. Is that it, Trustee Bell? Uh, Anything further? Yes, that's all, thank you. Thank you very much. I don't have any more questions on this particular topic. So I would like to move on to 11.2 report from our OPSPA representatives, if there is one. Trustee Boothby. Uh, thank you, Chair. I'll just, um, there was a question raised yesterday about the AGM and the uh, resolutions. So the AGM right now is scheduled for Saturday, September 26th. And any resolutions need to be to the OPSPA office by July 15th. Thank and you I very much. No other updates. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. So that's something to for, for trustees to consider in their planning for the fall. Um, moving on then in terms of matters for information. Uh, one thing that has now come out is information about a new math or revised mathematics curriculum. Uh, I haven't yet seen any uh, information on that uh, from the ministry, and I don't know whether the director has received anything on that. Yeah, so through you, Madam Chair, uh, during this meeting, um, a memo did come from the Ministry of Education um, pertaining to the math curriculum. There was an announcement earlier today. Um, and so we'll uh, be putting that uh, forward for uh, trustees so that you will be able to uh, see it yourselves. Um, and uh, the, the, um, the interesting piece around that is um, it was announced today, uh, the uh, 23rd of June with the expectation for full implementation upon the return to school in September. And so um, our staff has undertaken that and um, there will be a review of the document. Um, one of the things that I can say to trustees, uh, again, uh, to uh, the, to the uh, um, uh, uh, full, full uh, credit to uh, Superintendent to Wage and the um, program and learning team. Um, they have already started work um, with um, the advancing um, capacity building around mathematics and the partnerships with some of the expertise um, in the education community that is uh, to the advantage of Ottawa Carleton District School Board um, because she has already and the team has already made um, those contacts through professional learning structures. So um, my, my suspicion is that the leap will not be great um, there will be some things that are new, like uh, the financial literacy component that is, uh, in fact, now um, included as a strand. Um, but uh, that said, um, you can rest assured that uh, our, our team has been preparing for this. Um, and so uh, there is work to do, certainly, but the leap is not great. Uh, the challenge is going to be, of course, that um, uh, all of our st students may not be before us. 
um, in, uh, in September. And so we need to think about how it is that we will um, reach out and engage those students in a new uh, approach to um, engaging mathematics. Uh, but much more to come on that. And uh, we will get the memo out to you in short order. Thank you very much, Director. Are there any questions for the Director at this time? I'm sure that further information will be circulated to trustees as it becomes available. Uh, that brings us then to new business information and inquiries. And does anyone ha have any new business? Uh, Trustee Hop, uh, I would like to just ask if there's any um, update on the status of the portal for the report cards. I know that it was not functional this afternoon, and I know that tomorrow is our deadline to get registered for parents to be able to get those report cards. Where did, where did things stand just so that everybody's up to speed? Thank you for the question, Trustee Huff, Madam Director. Sorry, I do see that um, Superintendent Lehman has uh, put on his camera and so and I do know that Manager Owens is on and there was much uh, discussion uh, back and forth on email today. Uh, so I will turn it to um, Superintendent Lehman to respond to that question. Thank you, Trustee Huff. Uh, through you, Madam Chair. Uh, so um, the situation is that um, uh, there are a, a number of uh, parents that have already registered for the online portal. Uh, there are parents that are um, have uh, questions and our client services uh, are working through uh, those emails or phone calls. Um, and it's important to note that parents um, can register at any point in time to get on the report card portal. Uh, so elementary report cards will be available tomorrow. Um, and But they will be available uh, for an infinite period of time. So if somebody isn't registered until Friday, uh, they can pick that, uh, they can pick their child's uh, report card up through the portal at any point in time. If a, ch if a, if a parent cannot get registered on the portal, uh, they have worked with client services and it's just not working, uh, we will ensure that they get their child's report card in a timely fashion over the next couple of weeks. Uh, and whether that ends up being emailed to the parents or it ends up being printed and then uh, sent through Canada Post, uh, we will make sure that happens. Uh, secondary report cards are uh, will be available on the portal uh, beginning uh, July 3rd, I, I believe, July 3rd or July 4th, uh, and the same uh, will follow the same process. Uh, we have uh, had some challenges over the uh, course of the last week. This is a new process for us. And uh, we will continue to work through those. We have been communicating uh, certainly with, uh, with parents. Uh, information did go out today from communications. Uh, and we have been communicating with our uh, principals and vice principals and SOIs and asking that they communicate uh, certainly uh, within their school communities as well. So uh, we will continue to try uh, triage uh, any uh, parents that uh, can't get in. And um, certainly we'll continue to communicate uh, that information to the system and to parents. That's great. I guess the only question was whether the messaging on the web still indicated that the deadline for registering to be able to have access to that um, was tomorrow. So if, if that if that wording gets changed just so that there's open access, you'll be able to um, access the report cards, you know, register at any point in time. If that messaging were changed, you would solve your problem right there. And I'm seeing a number of nodding heads among our staff. So I think that's correct. Is there any other uh, new business uh, for us this evening? And I'm just scanning our list here. And we do not appear to have any other speakers under new business. So I would like quite simply to say thank you all very much for making it possible to do this continuation without a lengthy delay. Uh, huge thanks to our staff for, for uh, coming back once again uh, to uh, answer our questions and present, present your reports. Uh, we do have one further board meeting this month, and that is a special board meeting next Monday, the 29th of June. And with that, uh, I hope that everyone will have a pleasant evening. I declare our meeting adjourned.